What if we told you you have been praying to the wrong God? The Jesus you have been praying to is not the real God, but rather an image created by white people. The debate about Jesus being black has persisted for centuries. However, recently, information provided by scholars has proven that Jesus was black. This time, it can't be challenged. And guess what? No media is allowed to talk about it. So, here we are to share with you the reality. In today's video, we will give you the real reasons, without censoring anything, why your God Jesus was black. Let's get started. The image of Jesus Christ as a white man with fair skin, flowing hair, and blue eyes has long been ingrained in Western culture and religious iconography. However, it has been challenged. Many scholars have written extensive pieces proving Jesus was not white, he was a black man. Let's start the discussion with the arguments put forward by scholars Edward J. Blum and Paul Harvey in their seminal work, The Color of Christ. These arguments challenge this conventional portrayal and shed light on the historical evidence suggesting that Jesus was likely of African descent. To understand Jesus' racial identity, examining the historical and cultural context of first century Judea is essential. Ancient Judea was located in the eastern Mediterranean region, encompassing parts of modern-day Israel, Palestine, and Jordan. It was a crossroads of diverse civilizations, including Egyptians, Assyrians, Babylonians, Persians, Greeks, and Romans. These rich cultures contributed to the ethnic diversity of the region. The primary population of Judea was the Jews, who traced their ancestry to the ancient Israelites. Jewish identity was primarily defined by religious and cultural factors rather than racial ones. However, over centuries of dispersion and intermingling with neighboring peoples, Jews in Judea would have exhibited various physical features, including skin tones, facial features, and hair textures. Throughout its history, Judea experienced waves of conquest and migration, leading to intermarriage and assimilation between Jewish and non-Jewish populations. This intermingling further contributed to the region's ethnic diversity. Additionally, the Jewish diaspora brought Jews into contact with communities across the Mediterranean and Near East, resulting in diverse physical appearances among Jewish populations. While there is limited direct evidence about the racial composition of ancient Judea, modern genetic studies offer insights into the ancestry of contemporary Jewish populations. These studies suggest a degree of genetic continuity between modern Jews and ancient Middle Eastern populations, further highlighting the diversity of ancestral backgrounds among Jews. The Bible and other historical texts provide some clues about the racial composition of ancient Judea. For example, biblical figures such as King Solomon's Bredi, the Queen of Shebu, are described as having dark skin, which some interpret as evidence of racial diversity in the region. Ancient historians such as Josephus mention various ethnic groups in Judea, including Egyptians, Ethiopians, and Arabs. Now Jesus, as a Jewish man born in this multicultural milieu, would have likely possessed physical features more akin to those of Middle Eastern or North African descent, which means he was also black. Some theories suggest that Jesus was crucified because of his race. According to the accounts in the New Testament of the Christian Bible, Jesus was arrested by the Roman authorities at the instigation of Jewish religious leaders who viewed him as a threat to their authority. He was brought before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea, who ultimately ordered his crucifixion. The specific reasons for Jesus' crucifixion vary depending on theological interpretations and historical perspectives. Jesus' teachings and actions challenged established religious norms and authorities, leading to conflict with Jewish religious leaders who viewed him as a heretic or blasphemer. His claims to be the Son of God and the Messiah were considered blasphemous by some. Jesus' growing popularity among the masses and his messianic claims may have raised concerns among the Roman authorities about potential unrest or rebellion. The Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, may have viewed Jesus as potentially threatening the region's stability. According to the Gospel accounts, Jesus was tried before both Jewish and Roman authorities. The Jewish leaders accused him of blasphemy and sought his execution. At the same time, Pilate found him guilty of sedition or treason, possibly due to pressure from the Jewish leaders and concern about maintaining Roman control over Judea. From a theological perspective, Jesus' crucifixion is often understood as fulfilling Old Testament prophecies 
and serving as a sacrificial atonement for the sins of humanity. In Christian theology, Jesus' death on the cross is seen as the ultimate act of love and redemption, offering salvation to believers. But how did his race play a role in this? Jesus' challenge to religious and political authorities was central to his ministry, but if he were black, his racial identity could have intensified resistance from those in power, who may have viewed him as a greater threat to social order and stability. In societies where racial prejudice and discrimination were prevalent, Jesus' blackness made him a target for hostility and mistreatment, further complicating his mission and message. This means that if people were against Jesus, he was black. Many scholars have also proven that Jesus was Hebrew and Hebrews were not white. The ancient Hebrews, including those living during Jesus' time, were a Semitic people who originated in the Levant region, including modern-day Israel, Palestine, and parts of neighboring countries. As with any ancient population, the appearance of Hebrews would have varied widely, and they likely encompassed a range of skin tones, most notably those with darker complexions. Hebrew primarily refers to a cultural and linguistic group rather than a specific racial or ethnic category. Hebrew identity is rooted in shared ancestry, language, and religious heritage, particularly adherence to the laws and traditions outlined in the Hebrew Bible's Old Testament. Given the geographical location of the Levant, which served as a crossroads of trade and migration routes, the ancient Hebrew population would have been ethnically diverse, with influences from neighboring peoples in Africa, Asia, and Europe. This diversity likely contributed to variations in physical appearance among Hebrews, including a spectrum of skin colors ranging from lighter to darker tones. Additionally, historical and anthropological evidence suggests that the Hebrews were not a wealthy or privileged society. Instead, they were often subject to external domination and lived under various ruling powers throughout their history, including the Egyptians, Assyrians, Babylonians, Persians, Greeks, and Romans. Many Hebrews were farmers, shepherds, or craftsmen, and most of the population lived in rural areas. Their living a life of difficulty proves that they were also one of those blacks who were suffering. But what proves Jesus was Hebrew? The debate over the historical figure of Jesus Christ often delves into linguistic nuances and cultural contexts. Among the many points of contention, one intriguing aspect is the name he was known during his lifetime. Contrary to the widespread usage of Jesus in contemporary Christianity, historical evidence suggests that his original name might have been Yeshu or Yeshua. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. Yeshu emerges as a likely Hebrew or Aramaic rendition of Jesus' name in linguistics. The term Yeshua also stands as a common variant, with both forms being integral to discussions among scholars dissecting the enigma of Jesus' existence. This linguistic clue provides a window into his cultural milieu, shedding light on his probable Hebrew heritage. Furthermore, a crucial backdrop to understanding Jesus' cultural identity is the language in which the majority of the Old Testament, or Hebrew Bible, was penned. Ancient Hebrew served as the medium for the Torah, historical narratives, poetic compositions, and prophetic utterances that form the backbone of Judaic scripture. This linguistic framework underscores the Hebrew roots of Jesus' cultural and religious heritage. Some scholars have posited the notion of Jesus' ethnicity as black, drawing connections between his Hebrew identity and his potential racial background. The assertion stems from the historical reality that Hebrew people, among whom Jesus lived and preached, were predominantly of African descent. This line of reasoning suggests that Jesus, as a community member, likely shared their physical characteristics, including darker skin tones. While conjectures regarding Jesus' racial identity remain speculative, the argument for his potential black heritage gains traction when viewed through the lens of historical and cultural context. It challenges conventional depictions of Jesus often portrayed in Western art and popular culture, which tend to depict him with Eurocentric features. Now let's talk about what the Bible says about Jesus. According to Isaiah 53 2, he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. Scholars and theologians have deeply contemplated and interpreted this verse. 
it highlights that any extraordinary or imposing traits did not mark Jesus' physical appearance. Instead, it portrays him as emerging from humble origins, akin to a delicate shoot in a parched landscape. Furthermore, Jesus' absence of physical allure challenges the conventional depictions prevalent in Western art, which often portray him with Eurocentric features and aesthetics. Instead, this verse prompts reflection on the deeper essence of Jesus' character and mission, emphasizing spiritual significance over outward appearance. Through this interpretation, Isaiah 53 2 invites believers to contemplate the essence of Jesus beyond superficial attributes, focusing on his teachings, actions, and profound spiritual message rather than his physical appearance. His appearance does not fit the standards set by white people. In Jesus' time, black people were not treated right. So it is easy to understand that someone black would not be defining the beauty standards of that time. The saying in the Bible proves that Jesus was, in fact, that ordinary looking man that people of that time could not find attractive, which means he was black. Now let's talk about Revelation 1, 14, 15. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. This passage describes a vision of Jesus appearing with hair like wool and feet like bronze, which some interpret as indicating a darker complexion. The description of bronze feet could suggest darker skin. Firstly, the description of Jesus' hair as white like wool is often understood not as a reference to color but to texture. Wool-like hair texture is commonly found among people of African ancestry and is characterized by its tightly coiled structure. This interpretation challenges traditional depictions of Jesus with straight or wavy hair, which have perpetuated Eurocentric beauty standards. Furthermore, the comparison of Jesus' feet to bronze glowing in a furnace suggests a radiant and luminous complexion akin to the appearance of heated bronze. This imagery evokes a sense of warmth and richness, reminiscent of the deep tones found in individuals with darker skin pigmentation. Interpreting these verses through a lens that affirms Jesus' blackness challenges prevailing Eurocentric portrayals and emphasizes the importance of cultural and historical context. Jesus, as a native of the Middle East, would likely have had physical features that reflected the ethnic diversity of the region, which included a range of skin tones. Another important reference would be from the Song of Solomon 1.5, I am dark but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar, like the curtains of Solomon. They describe themselves as dark but lovely, using imagery that suggests a sense of beauty and allure despite their darker complexion. While this verse is part of a love poem and is not explicitly about Jesus, some scholars and theologians have interpreted it metaphorically to reflect the potential racial identity of the protagonist which they relate to Jesus. The term dark is significant in this context, as it suggests a physical attribute that may not conform to prevailing beauty standards in certain cultural contexts. However, the speaker affirms their beauty and attractiveness despite their darker skin tone, challenging societal norms and expectations. Interpreting this verse metaphorically within the framework of affirming Jesus' blackness underscores the broader themes of inclusion and acceptance within the biblical narrative. By embracing the idea of Jesus as black, believers are reminded of the inherent value and dignity of individuals from diverse racial and ethnic backgrounds. Here is another reference from Acts 13, 1 to 3. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manayan who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Acts 13, 1 to 3 presents a significant passage that some interpreters suggest offers evidence supporting the idea that Jesus was black. Specifically, the mention of Simeon called Niger has been highlighted as indicative of a person of African descent being among the early Christian leaders. The term Niger in Acts 13, 1 is believed by some scholars to be a reference to Simeon's dark skin color as Niger means black in Latin. This interpretation suggests that Simeon was known by this descriptor, likely due to his physical appearance. If we accept this interpretation, it implies that Simeon, or Simon, call it Niger, was a prominent figure within the early Christian community in Antioch. His inclusion among the prophets and teachers suggests that he held a respected position 
and played a significant role in spreading the Christian message. Proponents of the idea that Jesus was black point to the presence of Simeon, called Niger, as evidence of racial diversity among the early followers of Jesus. This diversity reflects the inclusive nature of Christianity and challenges traditional depictions of Jesus and other biblical figures as exclusively white or Eurocentric. Now, the important question here is how and why was history whitewashed? The whitewashing of Jesus began in earnest during the European Renaissance, a period marked by a revival of classical art and culture. European artists, influenced by their own racial biases and cultural norms, began depicting Jesus as a white man with European features. Paintings such as Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper and Michelangelo's The Creation of Adam solidified this portrayal, perpetuating the image of a Eurocentric Christ for centuries. The whitewashing of Jesus Christ throughout history has been a strategic tool wielded by various powers to serve their agendas, particularly during the eras of European colonialism and slavery. This deliberate manipulation of Jesus' image served a dual purpose, providing ideological justification for both colonial expansion and the brutal enslavement of African peoples. During the age of European colonialism, the portrayal of Jesus as white was instrumental in reinforcing the narrative of Western superiority and divine sanction for conquest. By presenting Jesus as a figure who resembled the colonizers themselves, European powers sought to legitimize their subjugation of indigenous peoples across the globe. This imagery not only bolstered the sense of cultural and racial superiority among colonizers, but also facilitated the imposition of Christianity as a tool of cultural assimilation and control. Furthermore, the depiction of a white Jesus played a pivotal role in justifying the horrors of the transatlantic slave trade and the institution of slavery in the Americas. Advocates of slavery invoked the image of a white European Christ to rationalize the enslavement of Africans, portraying blackness as a sign of inferiority and sinfulness. By equating blackness with moral depravity, slaveholders sought to absolve themselves of the ethical implications of their brutal exploitation of African labor and bodies. This whitewashed portrayal of Jesus not only served to dehumanize and justify the subjugation of non-white peoples, but also perpetuated harmful racial hierarchies that continue to impact society today. The association of divinity and virtue with whiteness reinforced notions of racial superiority and inferiority, perpetuating systemic oppression and inequality based on race. Moreover, the whitewashing of Jesus had profound psychological and cultural effects on both colonizers and the colonized. For colonizers, the image of a white Christ served to reinforce their sense of cultural and religious supremacy, while for indigenous peoples and enslaved Africans, it imposed a form of psychological imperialism, erasing their own cultural and spiritual identities and imposing a Eurocentric worldview. In contemporary times, the recognition of Jesus' likely Middle Eastern and Hebrew heritage, as well as the acknowledgement of the diversity within Christianity, challenges the whitewashed depictions of Jesus that have been perpetuated for centuries. By reclaiming Jesus' true identity and embracing a more inclusive and historically accurate representation, we can begin to dismantle the harmful legacies of colonialism and slavery and work towards a more just and equitable society. Despite centuries of cultural hegemony, African Americans have reclaimed Jesus as a figure of liberation and empowerment. Drawing parallels between Jesus' suffering and their own experiences of oppression, black theologians and activists have reimagined Christ as a symbol of resistance and solidarity. Figures such as Nat Turner, Harriet Tubman, and Martin Luther King Jr. invoked a black Jesus in their struggles for freedom and justice. Throughout American history, visual representations of Jesus have reflected changing attitudes toward race and identity from the black Christ of Harlem Renaissance artist Aaron Douglas to the Afrocentric imagery of contemporary artists like Kahinda Wiley, depictions of Jesus have evolved to encompass a broader spectrum of racial diversity. These reinterpretations challenge the hegemony of the white Jesus and affirm the multiracial nature of American society. Now, do you believe the God you have been praying to was presented to you by a white man? Tell us in the comment section what you believe in now. How do you feel about Jesus being black? Do you want to watch more videos like this one? 
If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.